Want to reach a global audience with your YouTube shorts? Imagine taking any short video, whether it's yours or someone else's, and automatically translating and dubbing it into another language. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to build a powerful automation in Make.com that translates and dubs your shorts effortlessly. We'll take an English video and convert it into Italian, but you can apply this method to any language you want. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully automated workflow that can expand your reach, engage international viewers, and grow your content like never before. Let's get started. First, you need to create a folder in Google Drive. As you can see on my screen, I've named it Add Videos here. Inside this main folder, create two additional folders. The first one will be called Final Movies, and the second one will be Eleven Labs. Now any videos downloaded from YouTube or exported from your editing software should be placed in the Add Videos Here folder. Once the automation runs, the processed video will be saved in the Final Movies folder. If you ever need the extracted audio separately, you will find it stored in the Eleven Labs folder. Now we need to create a base inside Airtable. If you're a member of our school community, you will find a link to download this table. This makes the process much easier, as you'll just need to click Copy Base to import it into your account. If you don't have access to the pre-made table, you'll need to create it manually by adding the following columns. The first column is Note, which will be a long text field. This can be used for any additional information related to the video. Next, create a column named YouTube Video with the type set to Attachment. This is where the original video will be uploaded. The following two columns will be Translate From and Translate Into, both of which should be set as single line text fields. The key difference here is that I have added a default value to each of these fields. Since you will always be translating from one language to another, setting default values will help streamline the process. Make sure to set them according to your needs. Now, Create two more columns, Original Transcription and Translated Transcription. Both of these should be long text fields. The first column will store the transcribed text from the original video, which we will generate using OpenAI's Whisper API. I'll show you how to set that up later. The second column will contain the translated version of the transcription. Next, add a column called Final Video, which should also be an attachment field. This is where the fully processed and dubbed video will be stored. For optimizing the video for YouTube, create three additional long text fields, YouTube, Title, YouTube, Description, YouTube, Keywords. These fields will help with SEO and metadata management. Finally, the last column will be YouTube URL, which should be set as a URL field. Once the video is uploaded to YouTube, this is where the final link will be stored. With this Airtable base set up, we are now ready to integrate it with Make.com and automate the entire process. Now let's move on to make.com. If you're a member of our school community, you can download the blueprint and import it directly into your account. To do this first, create a new scenario in make.com. Then click on the three small dots at the bottom of the screen and select import blueprint. Browse for the file you downloaded from our school community and import it. Once the blueprint is imported, you will see a long automation workflow appear on your screen. Now, let me explain step by step how it works. The first module in the automation is Google Drive, watch files in a folder. This module will monitor our add videos here folder for new uploads. In my case, I trigger the automation manually by clicking run once, but you can also set it to start automatically whenever a new file is added. To do this, simply right click on the module, select scheduling and choose when you want it to run. Next, you need to connect this module to your Google Drive account. I won't go through the connection setup as it's a simple process. Once connected, select the correct folder to monitor. In my example, I have automation, translate videos, and add videos here. These are the exact folders we created earlier. In the module settings, set the file limit to five, but you can adjust this based on your needs. I also like to automatically delete videos from the main folder after they are processed to keep things organized and avoid clutter. The next module is another Google Drive action. Get a share link. Here we need to map the file ID from the previous module. Make sure to set the access type to anyone with the link to ensure it can be accessed in the next steps. Now, we add an HTTP request module. The request type is get a file. 
and this will download the file from the shared link we just generated. This step is necessary because we need the actual video file for processing in the following steps. Next, we move on to Airtable. Add an Upsur record module. Select the correct base and table that we created earlier. Under the YouTube video field, make sure to map the file URL and file name from the previous module, following the settings shown in my example. Now, we integrate OpenAI. The module we'll use is Create a Transcription, which uses Whisper to transcribe the video's audio. This step will convert the spoken content into text, which will later translate into another language. The next module is from Airtable, where we update a record. Make sure you select the correct base and table, then map the record ID. Under Original Transcription and Translated Transcription, map the correct values from the previous modules. Leave the rest of the fields untouched, as we will use them later in the tutorial. Next, we move to the Create Audio module from Eleven Labs. Here, we will use Create a Speech Synthesis. First, select the voice and model you prefer. In the text field, make sure to map the Translated Transcription column from Airtable. Now, let me show you how to find different voices inside Eleven Labs. Once logged in, navigate to the Library tab. Here, search for the desired language using the search bar. You can test as many voices as you like, and once you find one you prefer, click the Add button. After adding the voice, go to the My Voices tab. Click on the small View button, and in the bottom right corner, you will find a voice ID. Click the ID button, Un mundo then return to your fatica. workflow in make.com, and paste the voice ID into the voice field inside the Create Speech Synthesis module. Save the module, and let's move forward. Now, we need to upload the generated audio to Google Drive. Add a Google Drive Upload a File module. Select the correct folder. In my case, it's Automation Translate Videos. Add Videos Here 11 Labs. Under File, select, uh, select the output from the 11 Labs module. Click Save and let's move to the next step. The next module is Google Drive Download a File. Here, simply map the file ID from the previous module to download the generated audio. Then, we use another Google Drive module, get a share link. This will generate a publicly accessible link for the file, so we can use it in the next steps. Next, we need to get the file from the shared link using an HTTP module. This step ensures the file is ready for further processing. Now comes the fun part, adding subtitles and merging everything into a final video. For this, we will use Add Automatic Subtitles to a Video from JSON to Video. First, you need to create a connection to JSON to Video. After signing up, you will receive an API key. I won't go into detail here as it's a simple process. Now let's configure the module settings. Set the output video resolution. In my case, it's vertical format. In the video URL field, map the YouTube video from the Airtable module. Under Resize, select Resize the video to completely fill the canvas. This is important to ensure the final video is full size as some videos might be smaller in resolution. Since the original video is in English, select Mute Video. In the Audio URL field, map the share link from Module 19, which is the Google Drive shared link of the dubbed audio. In the Voice Language field, select Italian or any language you're using. Under Transcription Mode, Select the preferred option. Make sure to enable video trimming, as this will ensure the final video matches the length of the audio. This is important because some voices from Eleven Labs speak faster or slower. You may need to adjust the voice settings to find the right pacing. Choose a font family from the available options. Adjust the font size. The default is 148, but I will make it smaller. For the word color, I will use a purple tone and for the line color, I will use white. Feel free to adjust these colors to match your branding. The next module is also from JSON to Video. Wait for a movie to render. The processing time varies depending on the video length. You might wait one to two minutes for longer videos. In this module, map the project ID from the previous JSON to Video module. Now we update Airtable again. Use the Update a Record module. Select the correct base and table. Map the record ID from the previous Airtable module. In the File URL field, map the generated video URL from the Render Video module. In the File Name field, 
Select the original YouTube video name from the first Google Drive module. You can customize the naming convention if needed. Now, we generate metadata for the YouTube upload using OpenAI. The next three modules will use GPT-4. Generate a YouTube title. I recommend using my prompt, which you can pause the video and copy, or modify to suit your needs. Generate a YouTube description. This module uses a slightly different prompt. Again, feel free to adjust it. Generate YouTube keywords. Ensure that ChatGPT outputs the keywords as a comma-separated list, as this is required for proper formatting. After generating the metadata, we update Airtable again using another Update a Record module. Insert the title, description, and keywords into Airtable. Map the fields exactly as shown in my video. Now, we need to download the final video file before uploading it to YouTube. Add a Get a File module to download the processed video from Airtable. Important, if you're using the free plan on make.com, you won't be able to download and upload videos larger than five megabytes. To work with files up to 100 megabytes, you need a paid make.com plan. Since YouTube shorts are typically small files, this should be enough. If your videos exceed 100 megabytes, you may need to upgrade your plan. Now, let's up upload the final video to YouTube. Add the Upload a Video module. Map the title from Airtable. Select the correct file. This should be the downloaded video. Choose a video category that matches your content. Set the privacy status to private initially. I recommend keeping it private first to check if everything is correct before setting it to public. Under Description, map the generated description from Airtable. In the tag section, use the comma-separated keywords from Airtable. From what I know, keywords aren't very important for shorts, so this step is optional. Leave the remaining settings as they are, unless you want to customize them. The next module is Update a Record from Airtable. In this module, make sure to map the record ID using the ID from a previous Airtable module. For the final YouTube URL field, add this static part of the YouTube URL and then append the video ID from the previous YouTube upload module. This will create a direct link to the uploaded video. Next, we'll upload the final processed video back to Google Drive for safekeeping. Use the Upload a File module from Google Drive. Select the correct folder location. In my case, it's Automation, Translate Videos, Add Videos Here, Final Movies. Under the File field, make sure to map the last HTTP Get a File module which contains the final rendered video. Click Save, and let's move on to the next step, promoting the video on Instagram and Facebook. Now, I'll add a router module, because I want to promote the same video on both Instagram and Facebook. For the Instagram module, follow the settings exactly as shown on my screen. In the video URL, select the final video file from Airtable. Use the YouTube title as the caption. Leave the rest of the settings unchanged, just as you see in my example. Facebook automation for the Facebook module, I will create a simple post. Instead of uploading the video directly to Facebook, I will only add the video link and a message. The reason for this is that it's better to drive traffic to YouTube from Facebook rather than posting the video natively on Facebook. Now let me show you how this automation works in real time. Running the automation first, I will upload a video in English. I've downloaded this video from a well-known YouTuber and saved it to my computer. Now I will upload this file to my Google Drive in the Add Videos Here folder. Once the file is uploaded, I will switch to make.com, navigate to my automation scenario, and click Run Once. This process will take about two minutes, so I'll speed up the video to avoid unnecessary wait time. Low frequency sounds of the sort that your voice is. I suoni a bassa frequenza, del tipo della tua voce, quella voce da DJ di tarda notte, vengono elaborati nel cervello da neuroni, nessuna sorpresa lì. Ma la frequenza con cui quei neuroni si attivano è anch'essa a bassa frequenza. In altre parole, quando parli con la tua voce profonda, il cervello dell'altra persona lo percepisce. Once the video is ready, you can see that it has been successfully uploaded to my YouTube channel as a private video. 
The same content has also been published on Instagram and Facebook automatically. This automation is extremely valuable if you want to expand your audience into other languages. By translating and dubbing your content automatically, you can reach new viewers and grow your channel globally. Remember, you can download this full blueprint along with the Airtable base from my school community. You'll find the download link in the first link of the video description. If you found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate it if you give this video a like and leave a comment below. Your feedback is very important to me. It helps me create even better and more useful automation tutorials in the future. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.